Bible version issue. Number four. Okay. We already knew it's falling away. We all Bible perversions, versions, we call them perversions, after the King James Bible go back to the Vatican. I've done the Bible version issue study. I've gone through videos of brothers in Christ who've done the study. And I turned the King James Bible on a heartbeat. I wanted truth. I had a love of the truth when I got saved by the true gospel. Someone said, how's that working out for you? Amazing. My life here doesn't matter. It's my life that I live in eternity that matters. I'm truly saved. I have a changed life. I have peace. I have joy in my life through all the bad things that are happening to me. I give God thanks for everything. I give God glory for everything. He says, how is it working for you? I'm going to heaven. How is going to hell working for you? With this easy believe is a crowd. How is going to hell working for you? How is your heaven here on earth, your best life now, working for you when you have an eternity burning for all eternity in hell waiting for you? How is that working for you? Bible version issue, same thing. How is the King James Bible working for you? Amazing. It's the one that told me about the true gospel. It's the one that told me about the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. This Bible tells us about eternal security, that we are sealed into the day of redemption. Right. The Bible, Matthew 24, 35, Mark 13, 31, Luke 21, 33, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You're not capable to even believe on the name of the Son of God if there wasn't a perfect written record. Psalms 119.9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. The written word of God. Okay. You cannot cleanse your life. The changed life is not possible without the Holy Spirit through the perfect written word of God. Your conscience convicts you, but it convicts the lost world too. What sets us apart is when our conscience gets weak or we ignore our conscience, the Holy Spirit steps in and our conscience bears witness in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I told him, I told him that easy believism, he doesn't want to go back to that. I told him that pre-time of Jacob's trouble is wrong and he's fallen back into that crowd. I told him he needs to stay away from the, you're saved by your faith, which turning faith into works. He needs to stay away from his friends that are Mormons and Jehovah's Witness. Preach the gospel to him. Stay away. I told him, Holy Spirit, I'm witnessing in the Holy Spirit your conscience. I told him. And then God chastens you. But without a perfect written word of God, you're not capable of, clean, of cleaning your life out, up. Getting the sin out of your life. You're not capable... It comes down to two things I always tell people that's a great sign of someone who's truly saved and someone who's absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, lost. You ready for it? A saved person will struggle with sin. The Holy Word of God, God's perfect written word, King James Bible in English, will push you to struggling with sin and help you to struggle with sin. Help you to fight it. To feed your spirit and hold off the flesh. Someone who does that, I have a big strong feeling that they're saved. I can't say it for certain. But what I can say for certain is when you do the opposite. When you don't struggle with the flesh, you justify the flesh. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Hollywood movies and TV shows. Oh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, going to the club and drinking a beer, you know, going to restaurants that have bars and, you know, there's nothing wrong with smoking. Or, and, and they go through on and on justifying sin. That person ain't saved. And the most of the people that do that are people who don't believe there's a perfect written word of God out there. But like I said, you've got people that used to stand for this book, and it always comes down to sin. Isn't that ironic? It always comes down to sin. But you got people who stood for the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, and all of a sudden, they don't want a perfect written word. Why? Because they want their sin. 
If there's no perfect written word, record that says this is wrong, no arguments, no debates, no fighting, abstain from all appearance of evil. Well, if I don't believe there's a perfect written word of God, I can get back into my sin. I can find a Bible that's, you know, sugarcoats it. Well, sin isn't that bad. It's kind of like going back to a false gospel that's okay with sin. Yeah. So many people are falling away from the King James Bible. And there's people who even claim to be King James Bible believers that are falling away from the King James Bible. They're adding to God's Word. They're subtracting from God's Word. They try to justify their sin. They ignore Scripture. Okay? Some people will say, anybody who's, and we're going to get to that part, dispensational, they ignore Scripture. No, we compare Scripture with Scripture. We know about this Scripture, but it applies to a different dispensation. Mm -hmm. John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. You're not capable of doing that if there's no perfect written word of God. Mm -hmm. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to them, Unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. Okay? You're not even capable of loving Jesus Christ without a perfect written word. You can't even prove you love Jesus Christ without a perfect written word. Yet, how many people do you come across that used to stand for the King James Bible that say, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, but they're using Bible perversions. How many lost people that never believed in the King James Bible as being God's perfect written word in English, how many of them do you hear them say, I love Jesus Christ? They're not capable of loving Jesus Christ, nor can they prove they love Jesus Christ unless there's a perfect written record for you to follow. If a man love me, he will keep my words. You're not capable of keeping God's word if there's no perfect written word. And a lot of this movement lately that's going on that's pushing people into the easy believism um, and making it easier for people to, to flip-flop from different beliefs when it comes to the time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security, uh, the Bible version issue, is it's all about your opinions and your feelings. The Robert Breaker crowd, Robert Breaker, that's his biggest thing he holds people in bondage to. Feeding your flesh because you have your opinions and your feelings. It's about you. What do you think? It's about what you want. You've got to keep the people happy. It's, I always love doing this. It's commonly, uh, what is it? It's commonly accepted among the people. Faith alone is commonly accepted among the people. It's what they want, so we're going to give it to them. This group that I, I want to... I want to make money, I want to have power, I want to have control, and the, all the people around me, they believe in a post-trib, so I'm going to give the people what they want and stand for post-trib. Whether I believe it or not, it doesn't matter. It's about controlling people. Same thing with internal security, same thing with the Bible version issue. Okay. Thy word, that's another thing that, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. And that's why I keep pushing that on people. When you watch a video, you don't watch it once. You don't watch it once and you just start clapping. With Brother Brian and King James Video Ministries, I don't watch a video once and start clapping. Yay! Brother JT, I don't watch one of his videos and start clapping and saying, yay, and then never watch it again. Uh -huh. I was so shocked that... Robert Breaker did that video about saying, I'm trying to use the right words, predicting the catching away of the body of Christ. And he says in that video that Jesus says that no man knoweth the day or hour. And he gets through doing the teaching at the end. He said, no man knoweth the day or the hour. I believe you can. He called Jesus a liar. And you have all these Robert Breaker worshipers, the man, they don't worship Jesus Christ, they don't believe in this book, they watch the video once, and because they have so much, they hold Robert Breaker to such a high standard, not standard, but high level, like, oh, can I sign my t-shirt? 
They watch the video once and they start clapping their hands. But if they had been true, like some of the brothers and sisters from Christ, like me, some of the brothers and sisters of Christ, watch the video several times, Bible open, check and compare scripture with scripture, they would have noticed, hey, wait a minute, he just called Jesus a liar. But how many people in the comments were saying, Robert Breaker, you need to repent. You just called Jesus Christ a liar. How many of the Robert Breaker fan people were doing that? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. They're not hiding God's word in their heart. They're just watching the video and saying, yay. They're barely following along. Yeah, it's great. It's good. I'm done. I watched the video once. I'm good. They're not hiding the teachings in their heart. They're not taking God's word and refreshing themselves every so often. There's times where I watched Brother Brian's video several times, and there was a couple times he did stuff, he said things in there I thought were wrong, and I let him know. Hey, you were wrong here. I believe you were wrong there. I agree with you there. But I wouldn't do it after watching the video once. I watched the video several times. I follow along in Scripture. I did my own little study. Word studies are great for helping you find more verses on stuff. 1 Peter 1.25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which the gospel is preached unto you. If you're a Bible believer, you believe in repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And after that happens in your heart, you confess both to the Lord. Then you say, Lord, save me. Please, please save me, Lord. I don't deserve it. Please, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please, Lord, save me. That's the true gospel. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. How many people that stood for the true gospel are falling away? Easy believism. How many of them are coming over to true Bible-believing ministries and trying to grab people and pull them away? You know what? I, I, I'm telling you that e easy believism, I mean, faith, you know, it's only by faith. Brother Brian doesn't know what he's talking about. JT doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, Ex-Catholics for Christ, they don't know what they're talking about. It's just, you know, it's just belief. All you do is believe. I mean, come on. And they start sowing seeds of destruction. And how many people have been falling away? We're dropping like flies. How come there's not a million prayer requests going on at Patreon? How come there's not a million prayer requests on my channel, JT's channel? A million prayer requests on Ex-Catholics for Christ? We're dropping like flies and everybody's just trying to deal with it on their own. There should be prayer requests galore. The cares of the world. I'm having hard times in the world. Jobs. I have two sisters in Christ that need prayer because they've lost their job. One's living out of her car with her dog. And we need to be praying for the brothers and sisters of Christ. Not just for the physical, but the spiritual. That they stand for the Word of God. They stand for these, the Gospel, the pre-time Jacob's trouble, eternal security, the Bible version issue. Why aren't we just, and I need to do it too. I'm just, I'm hitting myself in the head as much as I'm convicting you guys, brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Um, we need to be staying in the Word. We need to be doing videos encouraging the brothers and sisters in Christ to stand, stand, stand for truth. Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you do not believe there is a perfect written word of God today, then you don't know whether you are saved or lost, which brings, back to, brings, brings it back to eternal security. You're lost. If you have studied the Bible version issue and reject the KGV as God's perfect written word in English, you're lost. Okay? The true gospel is in here. And like I said, the whole point of this video is to encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ who are still standing for the truth to open your eyes to how serious it is today. People are dropping, brother, Brian's and, Brian, brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ are dropping like flies. They're being, they're falling into temptation. They're turning their back on their stands they once stood for. And the Bible predicted it. 
God said it's going to happen. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be happening as far as, God, you shouldn't, shouldn't have said it's going to happen. No. God said it's going to happen. I understand why it's happening. The Bible doesn't always just say it's going to happen. It, it explains why it's happening. And we'll get to that point. The next big thing that the falling away, which is recent, more than anything, it's recent, and I'll explain why it's, it's the falling away. The Godhead, okay? 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One. Period. Okay? There is no God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no God in three persons. One. Okay? 1 Corinthians 8, 6, but to us there is but one God, the Father. Period. There's not a period there, but I'm telling everybody out there who try to explain it away. There's no explaining that away. One God, the Father. There is no God, the Son. There is no God, the Holy Spirit. There's only one God. God's always a reference to the Father because it tells us here there's only one God, the Father. Of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all things and we buy Him. Now, I believe because of that verse there, and I'm a Bible believer, capital L, small o, R, D, is always a reference to Jesus Christ. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is still a reference to Jesus Christ, but as the fullness of the Godhead. There's only one Lord, Jesus Christ. How many people who, want, who stand for this and you ask them, and we're going to keep going through some more verses, but you ask them to explain their trinity, their God in three persons, God the Father, God, lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit. And when they explain it to you, it lines up with the Godhead of the Bible. But their pride, self-righteousness, because they want to be a part of that crowd over there, they won't drop those terms. They won't go back to the Bible and use only the Bible. Those are the people I'm talking about when it comes to the falling away of the Godhead. I'm not talking about those who reject the Godhead and they want their Trinity. They've always believed in the Trinity. God in three persons. God the Father, God the lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about people who stood for the Godhead and when they realize they're using false terms, their pride and their self-righteousness and arrogance and them wanting to be part of a crowd over here that believes in the Trinity... They turn their back on the Godhead. Matthew 27, 24, When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Person, I found three of them. I couldn't find the fourth one, so brothers and sisters in Christ, if you can find the fourth reference to person when it comes to Jesus Christ, there's only four references I've been told of person for Jesus Christ, and it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only person that can be called a person. The only person that can be called a person. God the Father can't. God the Father is, a, is the soul. There is, he doesn't have a body of his own, and he doesn't have a spirit of his own. You look up the definition of person, and I keep doing this, and I throw it in people's faces, and they can't fight it, so they start attacking me personally. A person is referred to someone who has a body and a soul, and it's always a reference to somebody who is living. How are we alive today? Because God gave us a spirit. Our spirit leaves us. You read throughout the whole testament, when someone dies, they give up the ghost. Our spirit was what keeps us alive. So a person has a body, soul, and spirit. The only person who has that is Jesus Christ. God the Father's in him, and the Holy Spirit's in him. 2 Corinthians 2.10 to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ, Jesus Christ. Third mention, Hebrews 1.3, who being the brightness of his glory, 
talking about the Father, and the express image of His person. His is talking about the Father, but person's possessive. The person is talking about Jesus Christ. And upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. His person. Jesus Christ is the express image. Jesus is God's person. His person, as it says there. It's like saying that I can't go with you, but John is my person. He, he's the person I'm choosing to go. 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. If you saw my studies, um, we're supposed to have faith in the mystery. We're supposed to have faith. We're not to explain how it works. We're not supposed to have an intellect. I've got to know how it works or I'm not going to believe in it. We're supposed to have faith. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God, one God, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. One God. I know that's a hard concept. But there's people that are falling away from this stand. Um, James 2.19 Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. It's pretty sad when the devils believe that there's one God, but you have a lot of Bible-believing, supposedly God-fearing people that believe, or that believe that three lesser gods make up one big God. The devils believe the truth, and they don't. It's pretty sad. Bottom line, if you believe in, the, in God, lowercase g, in three persons, and God the Father, lowercase g, lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit, then you worship a false God and are lost and on your way to hell. Now that is directed at those that are lost. You need to go to the salvation message I have on my channel, a, very, a much needed message, and get saved. But brothers and sisters in Christ, how many people that stand for the true gospel are Godhead, the true Godhead, that their pride and arrogance and self-righteousness, I'm not giving up the term Trinity. It's not found in the Bible. I'm not giving up God in three persons. Okay, it's proven that Jesus Christ is the only person of the Godhead. God the Father is not a person. The Holy Spirit is not a person. And I've said this before in other videos. I've talked to people. I've shown the definition of person. I've shown them the verse about there's only one God, the Father. And I've talked with them, and they explain the Godhead according to the Bible. God the soul. Jesus is the body. The Holy Spirit is the spirit. These three are one. They make up God fully and completely. Jesus is God fully and completely. He's God the Father. He's the Holy Spirit. They're all one. There's no three little gods that make up one big God. Jesus is not a third of God. Okay? The Holy Spirit is not a third of God. There's only one God, the Father. You don't believe Jesus is the Father? Then you don't believe He's God. But these people, they explain the Godhead to me, and they're like, and I've talked to them, they're like, you know what? A, they believe the Godhead of the Bible, and B, they have the love of the truth, and you can see it, and they're like, you're right, I can't use person anymore. Because I know, anybody knows that God, the Father, does not have a body, soul, spirit of his own. And so many people say, well, I don't believe that. Yet they use God in three persons. And that's exactly what it means. And I've seen people that, Edward, uh, Edward P.F. was one on Robert Breaker's channel about uh, God and three persons, and he tried to prove that Jesus is a person, which is easy, because it's absolute truth. Then he steals one of those verses and tries to apply it to God, saying he's the person, which is wrong and deceptive. And then he didn't even prove that the Spirit was a person. But Edward P.F. gets on there and goes, I, I believe God's a person because he's got a will of his own. He's got emotions, and he started going through his own definitions for person. And you set him down and throw the definition, the true definition of person in his face, he'll start attacking you personally. He can't deal with truth. How many people have gone over, I told you about Deborah Gill, going over to him, going over to Robert Breaker and turning their back on absolute truth, what the Bible says. They're saved, 
when you when you pin them down, they're saved, they believe this, but they don't want to give up the terms. They like being part of their group that loves the terms, the Trinity, the God and three persons. And if they stick over there long enough, what happens? They start turning their back on absolute truth. They start believing what well, God Father could have you know, body, soul, and spirit of his own. And, you know, the Holy Spirit could. Well, maybe there is three lesser gods that make up one greater God. And they start falling into that. Are they saved? Yes. There's people that are saved that have fallen away. That's why it's called the falling away. How many people are falling away? We need to be praying. I'm going to keep coming back to this every time we go to a new subject. Are you praying for the brethren? Are you encouraging the brethren? Brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, are you staying in the Word of God? Are you watching studies over and over, not like every day, 50 times a day? I'm talking about over time. Are you going back to old studies saying, I need to refresh my heart? I'm supposed to hide the Word of God in my heart. I need to refresh my, my heart and get that back in there. I need to do the study again. Bottom line, if you, there's people that believe in the Godhead but refuse to use the Trinity. So they go over to that camp of the Trinity. And what's going to happen is their conscience is going to become weak and they're going to start turning their back on the Godhead that they first pro professed and they're going to start using, believing in the actual Trinity of the Catholic Church. How great is the falling away? Are we taking it serious? Six, last one, dispensational teaching. Okay, First Corinthians nine seventeen. For if I do this will thing willingly, I have a reward. But if again my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians one ten. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, and even in Him. Ephesians three two. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. And I stop there for a reason. Colossians 1.25, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to, the fulfill, to fulfill the word of God. I did all those to show that dispensation is a Bible word. Dispensation is in the Bible. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, there's people who believed in the, in the word of God, and dispensation is not something that's new. It's been taught since the very beginning, since the whole Bible was completed, in manuscripts, but completed. The whole Bible is written for us, but the whole Bible is not written to us. That was a big thing. Now, today, how distorted is that? How many people are turning their back on dispensational teaching so they can believe what they want to believe? So they can mess up scripture? And yes, once again, not being true Bible-believing Christians and holding true to the term, um, term, but the faith in the Word of God. And they're adding, subtracting, they're not rightly dividing, and they're making a mess of scripture. Why? So they can believe whatever they want. Okay, I'm part of this crowd, you know, I used to believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, but I just, well, I met this crowd. I used to believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, but now I want to be part of this crowd over here. Uh, there's this really, really cute, cute girl, woman, um, and I want to marry her, but She's part of the crowd over there that's the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, that's post-trib. I'm kind of ruining this whole story. That's post-trib. Uh, easy believism. Um, she believes in, you've got to main continually maintain your works to be saved. She doesn't believe in the King James Bible as God's perfect word. But man, she's, she's beautiful. You know, and, and she just, she loves me and worships me. i got to give up all this stuff. It's not worth it. Don't do it. But they, they, they try to ease their conscience by saying, well, if I give up dispensationalism, I can go all throughout the Bible and have it say whatever I want it to say. I've had sisters in Christ do that, um, brothers in Christ do that, where they add to, subtract, and they're wanting so hard 
If you remember my rock study, I was like, I, did, I was this close to coming out and just saying, you know what, rock has never been a reference to any man except Jesus Christ, and only because it's not referencing Jesus Christ as a man, it's referencing Jesus Christ as God the Father. Because the rock, capital R, is always a title for God the Father. And I could have just came out and did that and put my foot in my mouth. So I went and did the study, and I'm like, got it in my head, it's not there, it's not there. And I went through it, and guess what? I found one reference where capital R rock is a reference, or not capital R, but rock is a reference to a man. Uh, it was a reference to Abraham being the foundation that God chose him to be the foundation of his chosen people, Israel. They, I understand it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob is when it became Israel, but God's chosen people started with Abraham. Now, so many people want to see what they want to see, they start adding to Scripture. They start ignoring Scripture. They try to take things literal when it's trying to explain a demeanor, um, like uh, Jesus did parables. You know, people, if they t the reason people couldn't understand it, I believe, is because they were trying to take it literally. Jesus did that too purposely because they weren't meant to understand it because they weren't ready to understand it. Um, but bottom line, dispensational, and people are falling away from it. They once stood for it. Um, God's grace is dispensed differently in different dispensations. There's stuff in the Old Testament that doesn't apply today. There's things that apply today that don't apply uh, well, there's things that apply in the time of Jacob's trouble that don't apply today, like you can lose your salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. You cannot lose your salvation in this dispensation. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, you cannot lose your salvation. But you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, and you can believe in Jesus Christ all you want. You can repent, believe, uh, confess both in prayer, uh, call upon the name of the Lord to save you. You take that mark, you're going to hell. Your belief doesn't mean squat anymore. You can lose your salvation then. Uh, the millennial kingdom, Jesus is physically there ruling and reigning on the earth. Faith is not involved, it's just works. But today, you don't get saved by your works. Sorry about the faith alone people and the people who believe in maintaining good works to be saved. But you're not saved by works. You're saved by God's grace. How many people are turning their back on dispensational teaching so they can make a mess of the Bible and they once stood for this, but it always, always, it seems to always come back down to sin? Well, if I turn my back on dispensational teaching, I can get the Bible to say whatever I want it to say. I can live however I want to live. Uh, Sometimes I sit there and think about it and I do get teary-eyed because I'm looking and I'm saying, I'm going, Lord, how bad is it really out there? I, I'm in the mountainside. I see how bad it is online. People turn their back. How bad is it really getting out there? I, I only see a fraction of the people falling away. How bad is it out there? This is very serious. Warning to the brethren. Brothers and sisters in Christ, once again, if you're lost, go to the salvation message. I'll link that too. I'll be doing a lot of links on all this where you can go and refresh your heart with the Word of God.